So Martin, ventilation is talked about a lot. What are the practical things we need to consider for calf housing? Yeah, look, ventilation is such a huge area, but let, let's get practical and sensible about it. We need to get fresh air in, so the calf, particularly at bed level, has fresh air to breathe. The more fresh air we get in, the less bugs and bacteria you have in the environment. As we've all learned from our recent experiences with viruses and COVID and so on, ventilation is key to reducing that bug population. So we need fresh air in without causing a draft. That's the key. So we need to get a, 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 enough air into the building and we're dependent on the wind outside to do it unless you mechanically ventilate. So let's just assume our house is in a particular position and the wind is blowing outside. In this shed, there's a good example of using Yorkshire board or Yorkshire boarding. These are overlapping boards. So there's a gap between the board and the outside and the inside and the boards are staggered. So there's roughly an inch gap here. These boards are generally five or six inches and there's about a two inch gap approximately between the, uh, the inside and the outer row, row of boards. So these are 25% void. It means a quarter of this area is letting air in, but it slows down the airspeed. So a high wind can blow up against this but it, the, the air uh, will actually go a little slower through it. But they still are very open. They're not the answer to every shed, and it's, it has been assumed that they are. If these are on the prevailing wind side, you still can get quite a lot of air and draft through them. So these can work very effectively on one side of the shed to let a little bit more air in. But on a high elevated site with a lot of wind speed, you might actually want to close down the prevailing wind side, or you might want to put in, say, vented sheeting, which is about 10% void. So the house, you need to be flexible about how you sidewall the house. So Martin, the orientation of the shed and the, the site location has a massive impact on how the shed is going to ventilate. Yeah, lots of wind here today, and that's really coming from a prevailing wind. So if, if, we, if we're perpendicular, if the long axis of the building is perpendicular to the prevailing wind, you're going to get a lot of wind uh, hitting the side of the building, it'll drive across the building and it'll help vent the building. That's what we're trying to do. But we've got to slow down that airspeed. So hence Yorkshire board or vented sheeting might be needed if you get a lot of wind on an elevated site. So always, always look at the orientation and the site. And this is a problem when we're building calf sheds. We'll often stick it in beside a shed because it's convenient for us. And we're not really thinking about where the wind is going. Martin, let's talk about walls. We have a wall height here I suppose what four or four and a half foot yeah we give ourselves credit here yeah <laughs> we're, 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 we're probably around that uh, and it's a personal bugbear car of mine is walls a lot of walls in sheds are built with an eight foot shutter okay so we end up with this very very large concrete mass with a high wall so when air hits that or wind hits that it falls off it and can fall off at its speed so we like to work with these lower size walls I rarely will I go over a six foot wall in a calf shed if, um, if I can avoid it and then we, we see this gap here. There's a gap between, this is now space boarding here. So there's, there's nearly, there's almost a two inch, well, there's an inch and a half gap in here. So we get a lot of air coming through here, that come at speed. And again, we have air that would come up from underneath or, or beside the board and over the top. So anytime we're getting these high air speeds coming in over the wall, we need to protect the calves. Okay, but of course on this side of the shed, we're, we are actually on this sheltered side of the shed. So that's probably why they've used um, space boarding on this side. Yeah, and you can, if it's more sheltered, you can. The one thing about space boarding is it'll let in rain, so you, you have to be careful. And that's where we got to look at protection. So on either side of the shed, if you've got a high prevailing wind or you've got rain coming in, and with the risk of calves getting downdraft. So the higher the wall, the more the downdraft, we really need to look at putting in a canopy of some kind that the calves can get in underneath to provide shelter. Not every day, but certainly for those younger groups of calves, a canopy makes a lot of sense. Okay, and the surface of the wall, I love this, it's really smooth. Yeah, it's brilliant. And when we, again, when we talk about any intensive rearing systems, we need to make the systems cleanable. And what I like about this, this is a finished concrete, a little more expensive, but you can actually wash this properly because it's not pitted, there isn't holes in it. And particularly when we're dealing with crypto, coccidiosis and so on, we can wash this wall and disinfect it properly. So walls should have a smooth finish. If we, if we don't have a smooth concrete finish, we can always apply an epoxy paint or a rubber paint and actually seal the wall up to that, about that four foot height. So we always have to, to watch uh, as the bed builds, our wall is getting shorter and our calf is getting into a diff different position in relation to the air. And we've got to be careful again as the bed builds where our canopy is. So once, once calves can reach canopies too, they'll eat them and try and destroy them. So it's nice if they're four foot above the calf. So watch where the bed is in relation, in, uh, in relation to the wall.